in that system. Each Jew is necessary for the fulfillment of God's will, and each one tries to understand and connect to God as best as they can under their circumstances. And that's the second level of reaching your potential of understanding and appreciating godliness in the process according to Maimonides. And the third level, of course, is to transform your world, to make your world a better world. That can only be possible when you feel total oneness with every other Jew. Because at that point, what you're saying is as follows. You see things from the perspective of God. From God's perspective, there's no difference between the humblest water carrier and the greatest tzaddik and Rosh Hashiva. There's no difference between them because they are essentially one and the same. And so when you see things from the vantage point of God, God's desire is to be revealed among the people into this world. And you can only do that if you are one with every other Jew. If you're not, then you're really not seeing it from God's vantage point. Because from God's vantage point, there's no difference between him and you. And if you consider yourself superior to that person, or you don't like that person, you're, then you're really not connecting to God as God is. You're connecting to God as you would like to be. And so, therefore, in order to receive God in this world, you must accept whatever it is that God wants in this world. And that is that all the souls are equal and one. And that God wants a world where God is one with the, with the person as the person as all the people are within their bodies. But the bodies are not separate from God and the souls certainly are not separate from God. That's what God wants. But you have to start by wanting to be, wanting to see it from God's perspective. Now, these two things, one thing is to elevate the soul, bring the soul to a higher level, leave the body away and to bring the soul to a higher level. It's only possible when you have obviously soul, because that's the sign that you really have elevated your, your soul above your body needs. And the second thing is that you can't have the revelation of God in this world when there's conflict in this world. When you say that there are, peop there are things in this world that aren't right, there are people in this world that God don't want. When you think that there's a person among the Jewish people that God doesn't want, then what you're saying is that God has a vessel and the vessel is, is, is incomplete. God wants to be revealed to all of the people. Just as a Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah, all the people had to be there. So too, when Mashiach comes, all the people must be there. That's what God wants. And therefore, we have to perform it, perform the Torah from the vantage point of what God wants, not what we want. It's what God wants, not anyone else. And that's the secret of these three levels of love of your fellow Jew that he talks about. Who's higher? You don't know, because that person may be higher than you too. Even when we're higher, we're all one structure. Each one of us has a role, and no role is really better than the other. And the third, from God's vantage point, there's no real difference. Everything is really one point. And therefore, the physical is also weak. But in order to be in the physical, you cannot make it a place where only the select few are, are, are desired, because then you're separating yourself from the other Jews. Then, because God will reveal God's self on Mount Sinai and in the future, only when all of them are together. So the revelation of God can only take place when there's Ahabas Yisrael, when there's love for your fellow Jew. So that's the process of the purpose of Torah. But there's a problem with that. There are people who we're supposed to dislike. If I dislike them, I don't have love for them. So the first thing the Rebbe says is that most Jews don't fall into the category who you have to dislike. Because you're only supposed to dislike those that are like you. If somebody's not like you, didn't have the background, didn't have the education, didn't have the conveniences, didn't have the support, why are you looking askance at that person? There's a reason why that person doesn't do what you're doing, because the person never had the opportunity. That's number one. Number two, <laughs> besides all that, look at yourself to see just how, that's in the previous chapters, look at how you're doing things and maybe that person really is doing things better than you. 
So that's the first step. The first step is that most people outside of your immediate circle, you have to love because they're not like you. They don't have the background. They don't have the opportunities. They don't have the, the abilities and the talents like you. The only people that you are allowed to hate are those people that have your talents and your background and studied together with you. And then, the only time you can get angry at them is if you've rebuked them. You haven't rebuked them. Whose fault is it? Did you talk to the person? Did you try to change the person's ways? Maybe the person all needs a little bit of encouragement. And so therefore, you're only allowed to dislike people in your immediate circle that are like you. And then, the Rebbe says, but even there, you still have to love the soul and hate the evil. So you're still loving them very intensely. And you have Rahmanis on them. That's the most, you have compassion for them. But you, but you still dis, disagree with the way they're handling their lives. Finally, there's another level. That's the level of those people who've taken themselves out of Claudius Yisrael. They've taken themselves because of their desire to be just like the Gentile, and they philosophically have decided they want to be just like the Goyim, and they become part of the Goyim, and then they teach people to do that. So those people have torn themselves completely away from God. Because they've torn themselves completely away from God, you're supposed to dislike them. Now what does that mean, you're supposed to dislike them? I'll tell you what it means. There was a man by the name of Jacob Frank, may his name be erased. Jacob Frank believed himself to be the reincarnation of Shabbatai Tzvi, the Messiah, false Messiah. And Jacob Frank was rejected, of course, by the Jewish people, the co his cohorts. So Jacob Frank, in retaliation, converted to Christianity, he and all of his adherents. When that happened, the Baal Shem Tov cried. Well, why did Baal Shem Tov cry? He's supposed to hate the mag. It's good riddance. Baal Shem Tov said a, a limb, a limb of a person, as long as it's attached, there's hope for life. As soon as it's removed, then there's no hope. As long as Jacob Frank still considered himself to be a Jew, there was hope for his rehabilitation. But as soon as he converted to Christianity and separated himself from the Jewish people, there was no hope, and he cut himself off. The idea of cutting himself off means that he placed himself outside of the Jewish people. Because he did, the Baal Shem Tov was crying at the loss of that limb, the loss of that piece of Judaism that was found within them. The Baal Shem Tov despised what they did, but he had compassion and he had sorrow for the limb that was cut off. But once he had cut himself off, he had to be cut off completely. Because, you see, if you have a limb that it has a pus in it, and that gangrene can spread throughout the, throughout the body, that will kill the person. And so once there is, once there is this separation from the person, once the person has separated himself to this way, then we have to get rid of that. But not because we want to, but just because we have to. And that's the extent of the hatred that we're supposed to, we're supposed to hate the person, not because we hate the soul, but because for the sake of the rest of the people, we have to cut them off. But we do so sadly.